input meeting for the fiscal year 2023-2028, the capital budget and program is now called to order. I'm Nancy Hafford, the chair of the planning board. And tonight our planning board will conduct a public meeting in order to allow our citizens and businesses and community groups an opportunity to express their concerns related to the capital program. The comments submitted to the board at tonight's meeting will be consider considered by the board and the county agencies as the process proceeds. The capital budget re requests are formulated. Starting out, I would like to take a roll call of my fellow board members that are present at this time. When you hear your name, please say aye. Mr. Schweitzer. Aye. Ms. Pinero. Mr. Hartman. Mr. Halipka. Here. Mr. Johnson. Ms. Wolfson. Here. Mr. McGinnis. Aye. Mr. Heckman. Aye. He doesn't talk to mom. Mr. Heinel. Here. Mr. Perlow. Mr. Warren. Mr. Caligari. Mr. Fotis. Mr. Avery. Aye. Thank you all. Tonight, Ms. Mrs. Ms. Yes? Mr. Uh, I am here as well. Katie Panero. Thank you, Ms. Panero. Thank you. All right. Tonight, Ms. Jen uh, Meacham from the Department of Planning will give a brief overview of the capital budget and program process. Then we will hear from those of you that have registered to speak at tonight's meeting. I'd like to remind all speakers that have you have two minutes to speak on your issue. And if you wish to leave a comment, please enter it to the host in the chat box on the lower right corner of your screen and it'll be read during the meeting. And if you hear a lot of speakers saying the same thing, if you could just say that you agree, if you don't need to take your two minutes, we would appreciate that because we have a lot of speakers signed up to speak this evening. Now we'll hear from Ms. Meacham. Um, thank you, Nancy. Just let me share my screen one minute. Okay, good evening, Chairwoman, members of the board, department heads, and representatives. My name is Jen Meacham, and I will give you a brief summary of the capital improvement program process. The Capital Improvement Program, CIP, is a multi-year planning program of capital expenditures needed to replace or expand the county's public infrastructure. It is a six-year plan that is updated each year. The capital budget is the term used to indicate the first year of the capital program. A capital project involves the construction of physical and permanent improvements for public use. A project can also be a park for a major maintenance project or land acquisition, as well as government buildings such as schools, libraries, police, and fire stations. There are many benefits to having a capital program. It allows the county to plan ahead for the construction of facilities and how they will be funded. It also allows the county to look at all the projects together, which would allow priorities to be established and enable the county to coordinate the timing and funding of projects. A good example of this is if a road needs to be repaved and the water main under the pavement needs to be realigned, the county will schedule the relining project to be completed first. It also fosters cooperation with other governments. A good example of this is the cooperation between the county and the Maryland State Highway Administration for implementing streetscape projects. 
The CIP is also a tool for implementing the master plan as well as community plans that call for capital improvements. Funding for capital projects comes from a number of different sources. County funding sources include the general fund, which is the money that the county collects from taxes, and from general obligation bonds, which is the money that the county borrows. The metropolitan district funds and bonds come from the, re the regional metropolitan district, which constructs and maintains water and sewer facilities. Other funding comes from special assessments that are targeted for specific types of improvements. Outside funding can come from a variety of sources. Some are federal funds and some are state. For some projects, the developers contribute funding. In others, where the county was petitioned to provide the improvement, such as sidewalks or alleyways, the petit petitioner contributes a portion of the funding. This bar chart illustrates the amount of funding supplied through each of the major funding sources. The bulk of the funding comes through bonds, both general obligation and metropolitan. This slide, um, this bar chart depicts the amount of expenditures that are planned for the current six year program by category. Of the over 2.9 billion total, sewer system projects have the highest amount, followed by schools and water system projects, other projects, government buildings, and street and highways. The other projects category includes community colleges, community improvements, bridge culverts and grade separation, storm drains, refuse disposal, land preservation, waterway improvements, and parks preservation and greenways. This flow chart describes the county's annual budgeting process. There are actually two budgets, the current expense or operating budget, as well as the capital program budgeting process. The planning board is only involved in the capital program process. The CIP process is laid out, out by the county code. The first step is the citizen input meeting. Following the citizen input meeting, the agencies have a capital budget formulated, formulate their request for the upcoming um, update. The budget office then forwards the request to the planning board. The planning board reviews the program, formulates its recommendations, and sends them back to the budget office. When the upcoming fiscal year is one where a referendum will be held, the planning board also forwards its recommendations for the borrowing amounts. The budget office reviews the planning board recommendations with the county administrative officer. The program is then reviewed by the county executive at least 30 days, but no more than 90 days prior to the submission of the proposed budget to the county council. The county executive shall hold at least two public hearings in two separate geographic locations. The county executive then presents the capital budget and programs along with the current expense budget and a budget message to the county council. The budget message contains an explanation of any projects that were modified from the planning board recommendations. The county council holds a public hearing, which is another opportunity for public input, and then votes to approve the budget and program by June 1st. The planning board has the ability to add, modify, or delete projects and funding amounts, while the county council can only decrease or delete projects. This is why it's important to have a citizen input meeting at the beginning of the process. Bond money is approved by voters every two years. This upcoming process is an on year because the bond level for projects will be approved by voters this election. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Meacham. At this time, I will call on you, all of you that have signed up on the online registration to spree. Please listen for your name to be called. At that time, you will be unmuted and you can begin speaking. Remember, you have two minutes and please forgive me if I don't pronounce your names correctly. So at this time, and also you can enter any comments you have to the host on the online chat. So right now, I'm going to call on Charles Bogdanovich. Good evening. My name is Chuck Bogdanovich, and I am the vice president of the Jacksonville Senior Center Council. I'm here to request the board to appropriate $4.5 million in the 23-24 capital budget for the construction of a new senior center building. My reason for this request 
is that our membership prior to COVID was over 1,500 members, and we have outgrown our current building. As a result of our increased membership, we have been reclassified from a community center to a regional center and now have a second assistant director and a larger budget. However, because of our limited size, we cannot effectively offer the scope of services that a regional center normally provides. The county recognizing this has commissioned and completed a feasibility study on, the, on constructing a new building, and they have developed a preliminary site plan and a building layout. The estimated cost of this project is $4.5 million, which includes all equipment and furnishings. The new building can be built on existing county property and will utilize the existing parking, infrastructures, and curb cuts. We can occupy our existing building during this new construction. And as an added bonus, the Department of Rec and Parks, who also needs additional space, will take over our existing space when we move. The older population in the northern area of District 3 is aging in place, and we will depend more on the types of services and activities that our senior center provides. Again, I am requesting $4.5 million for this project, and I thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you so much. I want to let everyone know right now that all the different agencies from the county are here listening to your comments. Next speaker is Delegate Carl Jackson. Hello, hi, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Okay, and um, for some reason, I don't have the option to show my video. I don't, I don't know what's, why that is. That's okay. Just continue speaking, sir. Okay. Um, so, for, as as was stated, I'm Delegate Carl Jackson. Um, I'm I'm on here tonight in reference to uh, advocating for um, a, a sidewalk uh, to be a part of the the six. Uh, sorry. Hold on one second. Sorry, yeah, so sorry about that. Yeah, so I'm on here to advocate for a, a new sidewalk to be installed on a Hamilton Avenue. I have sent a letter in uh, to you guys to that effect. Um, just, you know, really want to try to get the sidewalk to be a part of the Baltimore County Capital Improvement uh, Plan. Um, we're getting a new community center that's going to be built uh, within the vicinity of this road and uh, we presume a lot of uh, children and, and adults is gonna wanna walk back and forth uh, to our new community center uh, that's gonna be built at McCormick Elementary School. And so uh, I know this community, Hamilton, also submitted a letter, but they have been trying to get a sidewalk um, from that goes from uh, Hamilton Avenue to Chesico for quite some time. Um, and so I just wanted to just ask uh, the board, if you will, um, to please uh, make this project a part of um, the the capital, the county's capital improvement program. Thank you, Delegate Jackson. Uh, Don Seastack. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm not seeing her on the attendees list. Thank you. Mr. Philip Warlick. Mr. Warlick. I am not seeing him on either. Bob Bendler. Uh, there we go. Hi, my name is Bob Bendler. I'm the president of the Essex Middle River Civic Council, which is an umbrella group established back in 1960, representing 20 community associations in the Essex Middle River area. I'd like to bring to your attention six uh, particular areas that we would like to see some capital budget funding for. First is the Essex 
precinct, Essex Police Precinct Station, which is um, seriously uh, in need of replacement because of its uh, current condition and its inadequacy. We get great police services and they deserve to have an up-to-date facility. Second issue was regarding land acquisition funds. We would like to see funds increase for parks and open space to possibly be used at the Lafarge Quarry site and the Lockheed Martin waterfront site. There are unique opportunities emerging at those two locations uh, that may be once in a lifetime that we shouldn't pass up. Uh, we also would like to see a new Victory Villa, Villa Community Center. Uh, the current center was built uh, in the World War II era, and it also is uh, inadequate, antiquated, and in poor condition. We'd like to see streetscape funds added to the budget in the upcoming session uh, to do streetscape projects that were envisioned on Eastern Boulevard, Eastern Avenue, Martin Boulevard, that were at one time planned in the state budget and the state apparently is no longer doing streetscape projects. We would also like to see uh, improvements to a number of the intersections in the Essex Middle River area that are either failing or basically unsafe because of their design. Public Works is aware of which facilities they are. Uh, and we would like to uh, encourage and hopefully provide uh, financial support if necessary to encourage the state to move forward with the eastbound connection of Route 7 to 43. That connection would alleviate a number of major traffic uh, problems and congestion problems uh, in the area. So. Our requests, I guess, are primarily directed to the Director of Public <laughs> Works, minutes. Recreation and Parks, and the Police Department. Thank you. Nicole Solomon. Can you undo my um, share screen as well? Oh, you're doing it for me. Thank you very much. Okay, um, I am here to talk about the stretch of road on Bellia Road, uh, the 7,500 block. There was recently a Royal Farms built there. Um, this accident is right in front of the Royal Farms. Next slide. Next slide. Um, and then this one is a little further down. Um, same stretch, just a minute down. Um, uh, next slide. Next slide. Um, when this happens and all of Bel Air Road is shut down, we have um, issues with cars going around um, on little side streets, cars are getting hit. Um, Next slide. Uh, these are a couple of deaths and accidents of people trying to make a left out of Bel Air Road, onto Bel Air Road from Littler Streets. Next slide. Um, the Royal Farms opened on August 24th of 2020. Schools were not in, traffic was light due to COVID-19. Things are now starting to get um, more chaotic uh, as the time increases. Uh, next slide. Um, another uh, crash. Uh, it's, you know, mostly rush hour times is usually when it's the worst. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is a solution that I drew up all by myself. Uh, didn't really get any input for anybody. Um, we've all wanted a fifth lane going down Bel Air Road in this stretch, and they even drew up plans for that, and there is no funding for that. So I'm asking for funding for that. Um, but this is another alternative that I thought could work. It worked in Perry Hall. Uh, as you see in the example, you would take delight and come out at Henry Avenue. You would have that light more uh, larger with Two a minutes. lane. Um, and then the Royal Farms is to the right. It could slow down traffic coming out of Thorncliff. Um, it's pretty much just a standstill with one lane of traffic getting through lots of accidents. 
Uh, and then the last slide. Uh, thank you. Yeah, that's the two minutes. Sorry. Thank you. Jaron Shaw. Can you hear me? Yes. Wonderful. Uh, hi, my name is Jaron Shaw, and I live with my wife, four year old daughter, and two dogs in a neighborhood of 285 homes called Greengate, which is just east of the Quarry Lake on Green Spring Avenue inside the Beltway. I've lived in this part of town my entire life, and I want to share my experience as a cyclist living in Baltimore. Currently, there's not a single Baltimore County park within safe cycling distance from my home. My choices for places to ride my bike directly from my home include Falls Road, Green Spring Avenue, and Park Heights. Uh, just to name a few, these roads all have 40 mile an hour speed limits, one lane of traffic in each direction, and not one of these roads has a safe bike lane for cyclists. As a cyclist, I've been honked at, cussed at. I've had more close calls than I can count. I've had trucks roll coal on me. I've even personally witnessed deliberate strike of a cyclist by a motorist. So experiences like this have led me to primarily ride my bike on mountain bike trails. And the closest place to my home to mountain bike is Lock Raven Reservoir. The land is managed by the city's DPW, who doesn't allow mountain bike trails. And as a result, I don't ride there. I ride my bike at Patapsco State Park, which is 30 minutes away. As you can imagine, this significantly limits my opportunities to go ride my bike. Municipalities that invest in cycling infrastructure, both on and off road, experience significant positive impact. Bike trails increase tourism, increase property values, make communities more attractive places to live, boost spending at local businesses, reduce medical costs by encouraging healthier lifestyles, revitalize depressed areas, provide transportation options, increase tax revenues, and provide low cost recreation of families. And as an example, New York City built something called the High Line Trail that was built on abandoned rail lines. The High Line Trail cost $135 million to build, but in two years, after the first section was completed, it had already accounted for $2 billion in new developments, including residences, hotels, art galleries, according to the New York Times. Baltimore County can do better, and I urge the decision makers here to seek new ways of developing our cycling infrastructure for the benefit of Baltimore County's long-term sustainability. Thank you. Thank you. Herb Weiss? Yes, um, I think you missed number seven. Speaker seven. Oh, oh, and yay, O'Donoghue, I'm sorry. They are not online. That's number seven on my list. Correct, they're not online. Okay. Okay, Herb Weiss. Uh, he is also not online. All right. Francis Taylor. Not them either. <laughs> All righty. Jennifer Jones. There we go. Good evening. Am I unmuted? Am I on? Yes, you are. Ms. Okay. Jones. Good evening. My name is Jennifer Jones, and I'm a member of the board of directors of the Jacksonville Senior Center of Northern Baltimore County. We are requesting approval of the $4.5 million for the building of a new senior center on land adjacent to our current center. Prior to COVID-19, our current senior center had difficulty accommodating our 1,500 members. Large gatherings were limited to 70 people. The Jacksonville Senior Center Macadamia Nuts, a sing-along folk group, has 11 members and includes guitars, portable keyboard, amplification equipment, a soundboard, microphones, and stands. We are unable to perform rehearse or store our equipment at the center due to lack of space. The last Jacksonville Senior Center train garden, for which we are very well known, hosted 7,000 people over the course of the month of December. During that period, any other large gatherings were prohibited as it used the largest community room Smaller groups were impacted due to the fact that only two other small rooms were rarely available as smaller groups usually accommodated in the big room were moved to the smaller room. This year, Glen L. Martin Airport will be hosting the Jacksonville Senior Center Train Garden, which means the Jacksonville business community will lose whatever revenue those 7,000 visitors to our senior center could have contributed. About one third of our recently registered members are newly retired and first time registrants of our center. We have one of the largest growing senior communities in the state. 
They cannot be accommodated Two in minutes. our current building. Your support and approval for this capital expenditure is appreciated. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Thank Del you. Dolores Douglas. Not online, Madam Chair. Thank you. Edie Brooks. Hello? Hi, you're unmuted. You can speak now. Mr. Brooks. Good afternoon. Ms. Can Brooks. you hear me? Yes. Oh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm a board member of the Turner Station Conservation Teams. Turner Station is a historic African American community that continues to have significant needs. For better safety and walkability, a sidewalk is needed on Main Street extending from Ash Avenue to New Pittsburgh Avenue across from the Browning Highway wall. And we also have a critical infrastructure concern. We have frequent flooding on our main entry street and that's at Solace Point Road. It extends up to Chestnut Street, Oak Street and Pine Streets. And the flooding is getting worse. Even with heavy rains, we get flooding in people's homes along that section. Um, it must be addressed with whatever infrastructure improvements are necessary to remedy the problem. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mark Donovan. Hello. Not there. Uh, Mr. Donovan, you're unmuted. Mr. Donovan. Okay. Alan Zuckerberg. I am not seeing him online, Madam Chair. Thank you. Sirlene Aaron. Uh, also not online. Ryan Fisher. I, uh, hello. Hello. This is Mr. Donovan from the Natural History Society. Okay, thank you. Finally have uh, my voice here. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Go ahead, sir. Uh, good morning. Does the uh, board have uh, my PowerPoint uh, or can I, uh, can you share the screen? Uh, if not, I can just re uh, go to it. We are working on it now. Okay, can you see this? Can you see this now? Yes, yeah. yeah, so why don't you proceed, Mr. Donovan? Fine, thank you. So anyway, the Natural History Society has been a collection of the natural history of Maryland. And in 2006, we purchased property in Overly uh, to create a facility for the collections. We build a community of people interested in learning more about the natural world around them and to provide a 4,000 square foot research center and home for the collection. Uh, we've provided a place where the Overly Neighborhood Association meets, where the farmer's market serves the community, and uh, where other naturalist organizations meet because they don't have a home of their own. And since we purchased the property, we've invested over $500,000 in code, building system, and site improvements. And we're underway of spending another 400,000 for exterior building and infrastructure renovations, including signage on the street and other site lighting. Uh, mostly coming from the state legislature. This is a view of it and that has a new roof and site improvements 300,000 dollars worth of site improvements that were done. But the street is completely degraded. Uh, we have uh, utility poles, transformers and things that block uh, views of the building and of access to the lot. Uh, visually, we're going to be putting signs out there. Most of the buildings in this uh, 6900 block of Bel Air have been closed up. And we believe that uh, streetscapes with, uh, as was previously discussed, uh, uh, you know, utilities, ground signage, uh, lighting, uh, that's better seating and all of those things will attract new businesses and assist us in uh, becoming the magnet for business growth that we can. And uh, 
we uh, hope to have increased funding from the county in this area uh, to mitigate some of these problems and try to turn this block and other areas of uh, this uh, neighborhood around. Thank you so much. I'll speak in depth with you about this in the Natural History Museum. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Ms. Dolores Douglas, did I miss you? No, she's not on, not on. Thank you. I thought I had called her, but I want to make sure. All right, Mr. Brian Fisher. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Brian Fisher. I am uh, testifying uh, exclusively on behalf of myself this evening. However, just as a little bit of background, um, I am a resident of Towson. I am the immediate past president of the Greater, uh, excuse me, the Towson Communities Alliance, one of the largest community associations in the state of Maryland. Uh, more germane to this point, I am testifying about the need for a comprehensive renovation of the existing Towson High School. Um, my background, I have a bachelor's degree in historic preservation. I'm also currently the vice chair of the Baltimore County Historic Trust. Um, currently, um, the plan has been to uh, either do an addition to uh, or some small renovation to Towson High. That is not the direction we need to be going. Towson High is a Baltimore County landmark. It still retains all the features that got it onto the landmark list, and it may not be removed from the landmark list in its current condition. It currently can still qualifies. What we need is the funding for a new school, which will be provided through a comprehensive renovation of Towson High School, which will give us a new high school, retain the historic features that make Towson High such a distinctive building and provide the 21st century learning environment that we need here in Towson, as well as alleviate overcrowding, which we absolutely can do. We had a plan to do similar with Lock Raven Elementary School, which was approved by the Landmark Preservation Commission, which would have preserved the county of uh, the landmark status as well as put a modern addition onto the back of the school. This is something we absolutely need to be pursuing. It will cost a lot. It will cost the equivalent of a new school, but we will get a new school in the process and retain what we have. And thank you very much for the time. And I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ms. Sharon, Ms. McDonald. She is not here. Thank you. Miranda Fisher. Good evening, members of the planning board. Thank you for allowing me to speak today. My name is Miranda Fisher and I am currently a senior at Towson High School. I've attended Towson for four years and I've attended public schools my entire life. I went to Stoneley Elementary and Dumbarton Middle where I experienced learning through renovations. Renovations not only impact students' ability to learn and socialize in school, but also things such as athletics and extracurriculars. When I was in middle school, we weren't able to have a basketball team, which is something I was always looking forward to. Towson High students have already had to live through one or more renovations during their academic career, and it's time they finally deserve a new school. Throughout my athletic career, I've had the chance to travel to different high schools across the county. Most of these schools have been significantly nicer than mine, and we've waited long enough for our turn. This is an issue I'm passionate about because of my firsthand experiences. I have spoke to some of my peers and compiled a list of some of the biggest concerns at our school. These include the undrinkable brown contaminated water that comes from our water fountains, the 12 trailers where especially upperclassmen that have many of their classes, the bathrooms which are dirty, vandalized, and even missing toilet seats, paint peeling on the walls and in the stairwells, the ceilings which have holes in them, the doors that open into the already very crowded hallways, the mice, bugs, and even just overall dirt, and the air conditioning that only works on occasion. These are just a few issues that go on daily at Towson High School. I don't believe just a renovation can fix all of these issues and more. It is Towson's turn for a new school, and this new school needs to come fast. The students, teachers, and staff all deserve a new Towson High School. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Sharan Buntling? Not present. Elaine. Uh, oh, also not present. <laughs> thank you. What, what is it, Sofer? I think so. She's not here. Um, Eric Rockle is. Is he here? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Good evening. I am the president of the Greater Timonium Community Council, which is an umbrella organization uh, encompassing community associations 
and homeowner associations in Lutherville, Timonium, and Cockeysville. I'm here to advocate for the rebuilding of Towson and Delaney High Schools, not a renovation. Both schools show a significant amount of functional obsolescence that will not be able to be overcome with a simple renovation. Let me use Delaney and give you just a couple of examples. Delaney has a cafeteria and a kitchen is attached to the cafeteria. Yet in another part of the building, there's a satellite cafeteria that has no kitchen facilities adjacent to it. That's an example of functional obsolescence. Similarly, uh, the gymnasium is far removed from the weight room where uh, various student athletes participate in weight training. It should be adjacent to the gym, but it's not. Finally, the library is sufficiently high. Of all the volumes that have been pushed between the 1960s and now, and all the audiovisual materials that have been produced in the last 20 to 25 years, it's obvious that a library that was built for the 1960s is not going to serve the 21st century. I'd urge that the planning board approve rebuilding of both schools. Uh, I could spend an an hour literally on the shortcomings of the Canon design, my past study, but I will mm -hmm. not. Uh, thank you very much for the time. Thank you. Uh, Christy Demowitz. Demowitz. Yes, I'm here. Hi, good evening. My name is Christy Demnowitz, and I'm the president of the Hawthorne Civic Association, and I'm here with a number of friends and neighbors to talk about what it's like living in Hawthorne, a primarily diverse working class community in Middle River. What makes Hawthorne unique compared to other communities in the area is that it's located on a peninsula. There's only one way in and one way out of the community and nothing but water all around. We have a lot of trees and water, but what we don't have is much opportunity. Since moving to Hawthorne three years ago, I've become acutely aware of how little opportunity there is for kids and young people, as well as adults who live on the peninsula. We have two parks, but they are rustic with no facilities, fields, or ball courts. And we don't have a meeting space on the peninsula, so nonprofit groups like the Girl Scouts and Boys and Girls Club of America are unable to host meetings here. Due partially to this lack of opportunity on the peninsula, the community has seen an uptick in drug activity and violent crime including a, a murder in broad daylight last Saturday. That is why we are here tonight to ask the county to purchase or lease the property located at 2119 Eastern Boulevard and turn it into a community center, potentially with the help of private community revitalization grants. The property is a former McDonald's that has been sitting vacant for nearly two years, and it's located at the head of the peninsula at the corner of Eastern Boulevard and Kingston Road. Because it's a commercial property, it already has a gathering space, a commercial kitchen, bathrooms, a fire system, parking, and so on. Turning this vacant property into a community center would bring substantial opportunity at the same time as using up a vacant space. The space could be turned into a neighborhood hub to be used for after school programs, financial literacy classes, small business support, and meetings and trainings, and so much more. Having a community center within walking distance of our kids and neighbors would be transformative for our community. And because it's on the main road, it would also benefit communities all around us. We are very excited about this possibility for our community and hope you all are too. And I'd now like to turn things over to some other residents of Hawthorne to tell you more about their experiences living here. Thank you. Thank you. Ben Tabadai. Tabadai. <laughs> that, 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 that was good. good. <laughs> um, hello, everybody. Hello. My name is Ben Tabatabi, and I'm a resident of Hawthorne and active in our civic association. As previously mentioned by Christy, the community is on a peninsula and isolated from the rest of Middle River Essex area by Eastern Boulevard, which is particularly an issue given the number of folks who lack readily available transportation and must walk from place to place. I'm here to present additional info from the US Census about our community. Of the almost 4,000 people who live in the two square mile 
Peninsula, nearly one third are under the age of 19 with at least one child in every three homes. Just over a third of house, households earn 50,000, excuse me, $50,000 a year, while about half of those households live under the poverty line. Additionally, over a quarter of households receive governmental food assistance. The fallout from the pandemic has only exacerbated these struggles. And as we know, the full in impact of the pandemic has not yet been, still not been realized. Bringing a community center to Hawthorne would strengthen neighborhood bonds and create opportunity, uplifting individuals, local businesses, and our community as a whole. Thank you, Madam Chair and the committee. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. And just a reminder to all the people that have not signed up to speak tonight, if you'd enter your comments into the chat to the host, they will be read this evening. Um, Sharon Pinkerton. Hi, my name is Sharon, also known as Pinky. I bought, I'm from Hawthorne community. I have a kindergarten son who goes to Hawthorne Elementary School. And I just wanted to talk and um, about the community building idea that Christy, our president, had. I thought that it would be a really good idea. Um, right now, I live down near the end of it, and I know there's so many kids in that neighborhood um, would definitely benefit from some positivity from other folks. Um, I don't know everybody's household, but I've seen, you know, in my past and everything, how some of these uh, families are not very good influences on these children. And I think having a community center there with positivity and things to do to keep them occupied and everything would be a really good idea. Um, again, like Christy said, there's there's really nothing to do. You can't go play on the basketball courts. There's pretty much nothing. Um, there's, I think, two churches in there. Um, I wouldn't even honestly trust my son to be on the parks, especially after Saturday with you know, the shooting and stuff. So I think just knowing that they would be somewhere safe with people who, you know, are gonna be positive would be a really good idea. But I, real quick, I bought my house three years ago and I really enjoy the neighborhood. It's, I'm a little bit closer to the water and it's just really pretty in there. It's cleaner than when I came from. And um, I just think that would be a really good idea. So I hope that my comments help. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you. much. Crystal Weiss. Uh, good evening. Um, my name is Crystal Weiss. Um, I am the, I am an educator with Baltimore County Public Schools and I live in the neighborhood of Hawthorne. I've owned my home here for seven years. Um, and in the time that I've lived here, um, I've felt that there was a need for more involvement for children. Um, children that are involved in activities gain confidence. Children who have structure and engagement often learn more and have better social emotional skills. A community center will offer positive role models to the children in our community and allow them for somewhere to go as opposed to empty basketball courts with no hoops and playgrounds that where they could potentially be shot. Um, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Latoya Turner. Hello, my name is Latanya Turner. I'm a mom and a minister. Um, I'm an active member of the uh, Hawthorne Civic Association. We've lived in this community, purchased our home 14 years ago, and it's a very diverse community with a lot of children and a lot of family. And this community center that Christy has spoke about is a much need in our community. It will allow for a structured environment for children, for education, for family fun time, for a community uh, event. It would allow just to bring hope uh, back into our community with recent violence that took place on Saturday. We are in hope of uh, bringing our community together. And this community center would, would represent that, that uh, hope. This building has been vacant for two years and now is an eyesore. And we would hope that um, someone would consider maybe taking some funds to make that happen. It's ready to go, it has everything that we need to get it up and running. We know we will have volunteers and hopefully pay for this position to increase uh, job readiness for uh, people in the community. And um,
Ms. Turner, are you on? Thank you. Uh, that was all. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Sarah Wolfie. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sarah Wolf, and I am the Member Experience Associate at Girl Scouts of Central Maryland. I'm here to partner with the Hearthstone, Hearthstone Civic Association with Christy. Um, just a quick information. Over the past eight years, we have been trying to get um, Girl Scout troops established in the Hawthorne community, and we have had trouble due to no place, of course, to meet. Uh, we have girls who are interested and parents who are willing to volunteer to start troops. But due to policies of Girl Scouts where parents are not able to host troops in their homes or their backyards, it is only left up to churches, community centers, libraries to do so, um, and schools. Because of COVID, we have not been able to meet in schools, libraries, and churches. Um, so it is up to the discretion of the uh, community to allow us the opportunity to meet in a um, community center. So just quickly, we have um, 15, 1,537 girls in, in over seven schools right now that we target. Only 31 of those girls are members with Girl Scouts of Central Maryland as of 2021 going into the 2022 year. Um, so it is our hope that we can um, have the opportunity to have the community center so that we can build a safe space for our girls to learn STEM life skills, entrepreneurship, and have the opportunity for um, safe outdoor space. Um, and again, we have we would need to we would have the opportunity to try to serve a thousand um, five hundred and six girls because thirty one of those are already members. Again, over a span of seven schools that we would like to target. So I hope that we are able to get the community center so that we could have the opportunity for troops to start um, in a safe space. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa Whiteford. I am not seeing her. I'm not seeing her on here. Oh, I'm sorry. That they sent us a message. It's going to be Angela and Anthony speaking on her behalf. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for your time. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay, great. Um, so uh, thank you for everyone uh, just for your time this evening. I live, I'm a resident here in the Cockeysville area. Um, I've moved to this area in 2017. Um, and during that time, you know, I've watched a good bit of road improvement taking place in all of the surrounding roads, that would include Sherwood, as well as uh, the Montview neighborhood that's right next to ours neighborhood here on Powers Avenue. Um, those, interestingly enough, both of those roads were in pretty good condition, especially in comparison to Powers Avenue. Um, Powers Avenue, not only is it just completely um, pothole ridden, it has several areas where um, public water was brought in years ago and of course, uh, basically really did a number on the roads. Uh, in addition to that, a number of other issues such as there are, there are a number of spots along Powers Avenue that only one vehicle can pass at a time. As you can imagine, this could create some pretty significant safety concerns around emergency vehicles being able to come down the road. In addition to that, um, also with our the school bus that comes to pick up children and drop off children, it also creates some safety concerns around that as well. Um, the request, I did do some research and reached out um, to varying departments to find out, is Powers Avenue on a list? Is there, has there been any recommendations? And what we were told is uh, Powers Af Avenue was not up for resurfacing or any type of improvements and that it could take up to six years for something to be approved for Powers Avenue. So I would like to put in a request that this definitely is considered as um, something that's in need of repair in an urgent way. Um, that's the first issue I wanted to bring up with everyone today. Um, the second issue that I wanted to bring to uh, everyone's attention is a safety issue as it relates to where Sherwood Road intersects. I'm sorry? That was the two minute mark. Okay. Um, and it was a safety concern with uh, the intersection of Sherwood Road and Warren Road. Um, where it's a blind left turn and requesting either a speed bump with a light signal or ideally a okay. more significant improvement, which would be a circle. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Cavell Thacker. Cavell Thacker. He is not online. Mike Ertel. 
Oh, good. I'm unmuted. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm the uh, vice president of the Towson Communities Alliance, which is the umbrella group for the 30 plus neighborhoods of Towson. And I urge you to follow the vote and the recommendations of the of the school board to replace Towson and Delaney high schools. Uh, Towson in particular is the oldest high school in the in Baltimore County. It's 72 years old and its condition is very bad. Um, I, all three of my children went there. I've experienced it firsthand. Uh, the school needs to be replaced. It doesn't need a band aid renovation where we build a building on the back of it and leave the rest of the school. Uh, Unrenovated, it either needs to be completely replaced or completely renovated. Um, and that requires money. We have money uh, now because the state passed a, a, the Build to Learn Act. So now's the time to do this. We cannot wait another 40 years to replace a school that was built in 1949. Um, it's the most overcrowded school in the county as well, or, or the high school in the county. And we have more students coming. We've built thousands of apartment units in Towson. And a lot of those units are now, there's a lot of students coming because that's our affordable housing in Towson is the apartments. Um, so, and, and it's an embarrassment, both schools, Delaney and, and Towson, all the, all the candidates uh, in the 2018 county exec race pledge to replace Lansdowne, Towson and Delaney. And suddenly Towson and Delaney are in question, and I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's some kind of economic statement, but the schools need to be replaced and we need to start taking care of our students in Baltimore County. I, I would, it, if you don't, you know, if you, if you wanna see these schools in person, you really need to see them. So I thank you and I appreciate the time. Thank you. Angela McLean. Hello, my name is Angela McLean. Thank you. I'm just wondering, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Um, I am a, the CEO of McLean Speech and Language Pathology, as well as a speech and language pathologist serving Howard County Schools. So my years of leadership and service in the educational community allow for me to serve as an expert witness in this subject in terms of um, the request and the recommendations to have the um, renovations done for Towson and Delaney and not a new school. Thank you very much to the Planning Commission for your thoughtful consideration of all of these capital projects. I'm very aware and very grateful for your dedication. I'm here to share concerns about the BCPS Board of Education's decision to go against the recommendations of Canon Design and Design Collective. All of these national recognized, and from my prior speaker, the reason this was done is because this should be renovated instead of built new from architecture firms, and this is data that is factual. In each of these studies, these architects determined that all of the educational needs of children as well as facility needs could be met with renovations and additions. Choosing to build new buildings will have significant implications for our already tight capital budget and will cause over 41 schools to be left off the list. You've heard arguments that the schools are being left behind and new schools don't need any capital investments, but we know this is not true. Many of these schools are slated to be well over capacity in 15 years. We know that our county is changing, Many schools will need to be improved to provide critical health, wellness, and community supports. The blueprint for Maryland's future requires that we expand the CTE program to pre-K and community schools. We cannot afford to overbuild two schools at the expense of our precious families who will need free preschool, who will need the supports of offered in our community schools. We cannot ignore that what let's get gets left behind is, is the fact that our students are continuing to be ignored in our elementary and middle schools will need to be converted to community schools as well. Real families who need medical and mental health services within walking distance for their homes, who need food and pantries and laundry services, and go to school with dignity depend on these schools, Towson and Delaney, not new schools. We follow the data, we follow the evidence mm -hmm. as per the architects. Thank you so much. And one last point, I really wish that you would please return the BCPS SIP to reflect renovations and additions for Towson and Delaney. And again, I am most grateful for your- Thank attention. you. Thank you very much. Um, Dave Vegan, Vega. John? Dave, Dave, you're unmuted.
David? Um, oh, it looks like he logged off. <laughs> um, Chairman Hafford, uh, we can move on to the next person, which is uh, Phoebe Evans Latosha. Thank you. Hi, my name is Phoebe Evans Latosha. I'm a commissioner on the Baltimore County Landmarks Preservation Commission, a Stonely Community Association board member, and a delegate to the Towson Communities Alliance. I come before you not as a representative of those institutions, but as a private citizen, parent of a current student at Towson High and graduate. I urge the planning department to support replacement school level funding for Towson High so we can begin the planning and design process. The GWWO feasibility study for Towson High showed that both options for a renovation addition and replacement school would be expensive, ranging from 131 to 143 million. BCPF staff indicated that they wouldn't include the full 131 million cost in their budget recommendation if a renovation addition for Towson High is selected, but instead it would be cheaper and smaller at half the budget the GWWO identified. How can Baltimore County address Towson High's severe overcrowding and poor facility conditions with half the budget it needs? Since 2017, the school board has recommended and continues to list Towson High as a replacement school on its capital budget request. 2014 GWWO facility study lists Towson High as having the second lowest high school facility score. It's been the most overcrowded high school in BCPS for years with trailers since 2004 and currently 133% capacity. 2018 Sage High School Feasibility Study recommended a replacement school for Towson High. While the My iPass study identified over 4 billion in school capital project needs system wide, it scaled back its recommendation in order to meet a shorter 15 year time cycle and reduce the budget by half. How is it equitable to scale back a capital project on a high school with the second lowest facility score, most overcrowded, and that has already had trailers for 17 years while prioritizing providing upgrades to new and recently renovated schools within 15 years? Extend the timeline and work with funding partners to increase available funding. Baltimore County has a desperate need for affordable housing and needs to equitably develop it in areas of opportunity like Towson. However, the community will continue to object to new housing in Towson High's chronically overcrowded district if the school is not going to fully fund the type of comprehensive replacement level build, rebuild that Towson needs that includes not just additional classroom space, but expanded and upgraded common areas like its cafeteria, library, auditorium, gym, and other athletic spaces. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dion Bergman. Oh, Kai Young, I'm sorry. Kai Young's next. Hello there. Thank you for uh, allowing me this time. My name is Kai. I am a 27 year old lifelong resident of Baltimore County. I grew up actually right across from Quarry Lake near the other gentleman who recently spoke. And while I do absolutely agree with the need for new bike lanes, I want to actually expand on that. I am requesting that the county considered a countywide survey to review all new construction uh, that includes residential, commercial, anything in between to determine whether or not new improvements can be made to existing infrastructure to support pedestrians, cyclists, and motorists, but more focusing on the former. Um, and this is to help kind of re vamp and prepare the county moving forward for the future for increased residency as well as um, just different uh, newer projects that have uh, been planned going forward as well. Uh, but one of the most important ones that I do want to kind of highlight was that Boys Latin on West Lake recently just finished a boarding school and a lot of their young students have been traversing across West Lake, which does not have a sidewalk right now, towards Falls and towards uh, Roland Ave. And with my communications with the county, uh, due to a lack of a curb or gutter system along this avenue, uh, it would need to be considered a standalone capital project. So I'm really just kind of asking the county to consider allocating significant funding. I do not have a monetary value. I'm not that smart uh, for any kind of uh, public renovations and improvements to our infrastructure for pedestrians, bicyclists. Um, I would love to see a bike lane on Falls Road. Um, I would love to see everything um, for uh, active walkers and bicyclists, and just any kind of uh, improvements in that realm. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, one second. Thank you. Uh, Dion Berman. Hi, my name is Diana Bergman. Um, good evening, board members. So 
So I'm here to request two separate requests. The first request is to honor the MyPass recommendation because it costs taxpayers up to $1.2 million to not only look at public school facilities, but to make sure that all academic programs was gonna be accessible as a world-class education for students, regardless of what zip code they reside in. Now, in 2018, I actually have proof of a county executive and county council members supporting the Maryland's blueprint, okay? And that was an investment of planning ahead to give students in BCPS a world-class education. That means we plan. My second recommendation for this board to consider is that my past study, we spent over a year working on it together from county employees, community members, students, teachers, and everybody came together to create that final recommendation of the MyPass. And it got full inventory of what we have in Baltimore County for schools. Why aren't we doing that same similar studies for our public libraries, um, doing the inventory for our fire departments that provide public service, our police departments, and so on. So we gotta spend those tax dollars wisely. Because, you know, when we're waiting to get on capital improvement projects, a certain percent from the state's help or the federal help. We have to be able to match that and we want to make sure we do right. So in order to do that, we have to know our inventory in Baltimore County as a whole. And I expect to see more studies planning ahead 10 years down the road to address the needs of Baltimore County residents. So I wish you guys all the best and all the work that you have to do. But please learn how to plan ahead of time and stick to those plans. We shouldn't be favoritizing one community over another because they want to make a lot of noise and be loud. And we cannot repeat history that did no good. So thank you very much for your time. And thank I appreciate you. it. Molly jo Jose. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairwoman and Planning Board members. My name is Molly Joes. And I'm a licensed civil and environmental engineer with 20 years of experience in capital projects. I also serve in the Baltimore County Board of Education as a member at large. Today, I speak as an individual citizen and not for the board. Last year, for the first time at the request of the state board, the Baltimore County Executive initiated an independent multi-year improvement plan for all schools. The MAI CAS, which looked at all 175 Baltimore County schools. I would like to thank the county executive for funding this much needed long term comprehensive study at a cost of 1.2 million dollars, which has never been done before. My CAS maximizes state funding. It was inclusive of stakeholder and community engagement, and it allocated limited resources equitably. MyPass also makes sure that all schools are improved within 15 years in alignment with community preferences. Even though our needs outweigh our budget, it ensured that funding for facilities would be allocated to benefit as many school students as possible. Over 110,000 children attend BCPS. It ensures that our students, especially from disenfranchised, disadvantaged areas, get a fair share. Schools are the bedrock of our communities, and I urge this board to do the right thing for all of our children and implement the MyCAS recommendations. Decades of research has found that the conditions of school facilities have an impact on our student academic outcomes. As planning board members, you all know the importance of planning ahead. The MyCAS is a plan for all BCPS children. The best time to plant a tree was 15 years ago. The second best time is now. Thank you all for your time. Have a good evening. Thank you. Tom Murtaugh. Chair, my name is Tom Murtaugh. I'm president of the Bicota Senior Center Council Board. Bicota Senior Center in West Towson is in a building that is almost 100 years old and many updates are needed. 50% of the building is our senior center. The remaining portion of the building houses the Baltimore County Department of Aging. Those offices were enhanced with air conditioning units. However, the aging units are now leaking, which creates problems for the senior center, including damage to ceilings, 
destruction of a copy machine and buckling of floors. The restrooms are not in compliance with current ADA regulations as they are not handicapped accessible. The lighting throughout the building is insufficient, creating a concern for the safety of our seniors. In addition to concerns about the building, the limited parking at the center is a barrier to participation. With more than 2,000 active members prior to COVID and only 85 parking spaces, many members are unable to attend programs. We had great hopes that the Towson Loop Circulator would service our center, allowing existing and potential new members, including those residing in low-income housing, to come to the center. We request a capital project to increase available parking at the center and for the circular to service the center as well. This year, we applied for an, for an AARP community challenge grant for some of this work to be done. We were not approved as there were 2,800 applicants and only 175 approved grants. We asked therefore, we therefore asked Baltimore County to support these projects to improve the by code of senior to help us fulfill our mention, our mission to strengthen lives by providing services, programs, and connections to resources. We estimate those interior costs to be approximately $100,000. We would be happy to provide additional information about our request and invite you to visit the, the by code of senior center. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Doris Stern. Good evening. Uh, I am Doris Duran, and I represent the Morning Star Baptist Church and the MSBC Five Star Program Incorporated, which is a CDC that serves the Woodlawn area. Uh, I'm requesting today that Baltimore County Planning consider the construction of an access road from the 1500 block of Woodlawn Drive to the 1600 block of Whitehead Court in Woodlawn. This area is a part of the Morning Star Baptist Church campus that is located at 1512 Woodlawn Drive. The campus has three buildings providing worship, outreach, and educational services, as well as general community outreach services and uh, workforce development into the Woodlawn area, as well as the surrounding communities. Um, we have a, a couple of other pro um, properties on the campus which are the, fam the Star Family Life Center, which is located at 1600 Whitehead Court, adjacent to the restaurant store, and the Renaissance Counseling Center that is uh, located at 6665 Security Boulevard. Morning Star Baptist Church has partnered with the, the CDC, um, which is the Community Development Corporation, and provides multi-generational programs and outreach services to the Woodlawn and surrounding communities, including food distribution to over 85,000 individuals and families over the past year, hosting two community baby showers, distributing necessities to um, 200 expectant infant and toddler families, partnering with Baltimore County government to host two job fairs with over 80 employers present that provided ongoing educational and job education and job opportunities to the attendees. We are concerned that we need the access road because there's only one way into the Woodlawn Court area, and it's a two-direction um, two road, um, a direction in each, um, a, a lane in each direction, that is. And what happens is that it is flanked by construction vehicles and truckers who sometimes sleep in their vehicles. And what we know is that it does present a safety hazard um, to the walking um, partners that are coming in to use the services at the Family Life Center. Please consider uh, building this or constructing this access road. Thank you for your comments. Delegate Kat Forbes. Good evening, and thank you for this opportunity to address you. I'm Delegate Kathy Forbes. I represent District 42A which encompasses the Greater Towson area in the Maryland House of Delegates. I'd like to talk to you tonight about the dire need to rebuild Towson and Delaney High Schools. The reasons are self-evident. Towson High is the oldest and most overcrowded high school in Baltimore County. It was built during the administration of Harry S. Truman. It's a maze of patched together and poorly renovated hallways and classrooms. Ceilings leak and have collapsed. There's a mouse infestation 
and they have to run the heat and air conditioning at the same time to prevent mold from growing in the school. 12 trailers have sat behind the school for years. The situation at Delaney is also troubling. It has had no meaningful renovation since it was built in 1964. The drinking water is brown and has been found to contain lead, pipes regularly burst, and the electrical system has failed more than once. Most recently, it caused a fire in the auditorium last month. But there is hope. We are fortunate to have a former teacher as county executive, Johnny Osheski, who understands the needs for 21st century schools. I've talked with him at length about this subject, and I know that he wants to do the right thing. That's why he's pledged repeatedly to rebuild these schools, and that's why he invested a million dollars in planning money to start the process of rebuilding these schools. County preservationists are also on board with the rebuild at Towson, and we will collaborate with them to keep the most historic parts of the school and tear the rest down. Whether you call it a renovation or a new building, it's going to take new school dollars to provide comprehensive solutions at both schools. The feasibility studies commissioned by the planning department prove this. Just like Lansdowne High, which is being rebuilt, Towson and Delaney were already slated for replacement. The Board of Education has voted this way three times. And so in the SAGE policy group study in 2018 also recommended it. We cannot kick the can down the road any further. As the county executive himself has said, we have to stop coming up with excuses as to why we can't do these big things and do them right now. Thank you so much for your service and your time tonight. Thank you. Uh, Jesse Jagger. Hi, my name is Jesse Yeager. I am a mother of two kids at BCPS. All of our schools in the central district are overcrowded, but Towson High and Delaney High are in desperate need of replacement schools, not renovations. A renovation is not a sound decision at all. These schools have been neglected for far too long, and they are projected to experience the worst overcrowding in the entire county. All of the schools in the county need attention, but Towson and Delaney need to be at the top of the list as a priority. My two kids currently go to a school that had a renovation, and while it is a beautiful school, it didn't have the foresight to work around growing population. So my first grader cannot eat lunch in the cafeteria due to overcrowding. There's many students and trailers all over the whole county. It is projected to get worse, and we already know that projections are undercounted every year, and Towson High is going to have the absolute worst of this. Strong and healthy schools make a strong and healthy community. You cannot keep expanding a community without addressing the schools. And right now, our schools are failing. Renovating these schools will only be a band-aid solution that will end up costing more money in the long run. We need a new Towson and a new Delaney. We need more and better schools around the whole county. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Shelley Hedelman. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, uh, planning committee, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here today. I'm the senator from District 11 and Delaney High School is in my district and many of the students who attend Delaney also reside there. I'm here today to urge you to adhere to the recommendation of the Baltimore County Public School Board to fund a replacement school for Delaney. Delaney High School was built in 1964 as in, and is in very poor condition systemically, structurally, and cosmetically due to age and neglect. It's one of only a handful of schools currently without central air, and the school has units in the classrooms that were installed during the pandemic. Parents have advocated for the past seven plus years for relief from brown water, burst pipes, antiquated facilities, settlement issues, plexiglass windows, electrical problems out on the fields, etc. Delaney also has a deficit of 47,000 square feet of allowable space, um, according to MSDE formula, and this is the largest deficit of space of any school in Baltimore County. The high school is projected to be overcrowded within three years in the BCPS student counts, and this doesn't include the additional 150 English language learner students currently attending Parkville High School that will return to Delaney when that cluster program is uh, dissolved. Um, 
in years past, BCPS has undercounted the enrollment and when actual enrollment has been higher than projected. The state of the condition of the school, the inadequate maintenance and the condition of the building and the costs related to a comprehensive renovation justify a replacement school. The argument that this is a zero sum game that not a game, but uh, an issue that other schools will be neglected if we move ahead on replacement these two replacement high schools is is a false equivalency. Um, many of the schools listed in the program uh, will have been built in the last decade, and of course, we need to um, this, maintain them systemically so we don't end up in a position that we're in today where we've neglected the regular maintenance, but those roofs and boilers and chillers um, do have a life cycle that we need to keep up with. And I, I know I commit to fighting for more state funding to supplement the local funding that goes to the school construction program. So I urge you to support the recommendation as it was voted on by the Baltimore County Public School Board and support a replacement school for Delaney High School. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Jones. Of Towson, I strongly recommend the replacement of Towson High School rather than a renovation. I have a unique perspective because I was heavily involved in the last renovation effort in the 1990s, working with local community leaders, Towson High alumni, and county political figures to get that renovation completed. I taught at Towson High until my retirement in 2014 my three children graduated from the school. So why should the school be replaced? As we all know, things have changed dramatically since the 1990s. The first major concern involves the health of our students and staff. The, the HVAC and ventilation systems installed in the last renovation have been a major problem, primarily because there was an attempt to make a huge system operate in a building constructed in 1949. Despite numerous efforts to solve those problems, adequate control of the systems has proven impossible since that time. The second concern is space. As you know, Towson High is the most crowded high school in the county. Continued residential building in the area is compounding the problem. Because of restriction on building changes in the last renovation, a number of classrooms in the current building are undersized or poorly designed. To me, the most pressing concern is safety. Designed in 1948, Towson High has multiple outside access doors and inadequate security features. Its size and design make it very difficult to secure. A new building could be designed with security as a top priority. Again, I urge you to replace, not renovate Towson High. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yara Kitchen. Oh, hello, my name is Yara Sheikh, and I am the Delaney High School PTSA president. Since two, I want to thank you all for the work you do. Since 2017, the Board of Education has recommended a replacement school for Delaney High School, a feasibility study funded by the county executive to determine the costs of a 21st century renovation versus the cost of a new school was completed and presented to the Board of Education in early September 2021. The study was then disregarded by BCPS in favor of the My IPASS recommendations. At the September 14, 2021 Board of Education meeting, the Executive Director of Facilities Management and Strategic Planning, Mr. Pete Dixit, explained that the commissioned feasibility study was not to be considered. In actuality, the renovations proposed for Delaney High School in My IPASS were much cheaper and smaller in scale. To quote Mr. Dixit, my iPass recommends much less. If this happens, this brings our community right back to 2016, when the Board of Education rejected a proposed renovation of Delaney High School because of its limited and inadequate scope, which the community exposed. The condition of our school, the total lack of past state funding, inadequate maintenance, completed state and county surveys of the condition of the building, and costs of a comprehensive renovation justify a replacement school. The board's decision was based on the findings of a December 2018 BCPS study, 
the 2014 GWWO facility study and the revelation that the My iPass study recommended an inadequate renovation as compared to the most recent feasibility study completed. The Delaney High School community supports long term planning for replacement high schools as warranted by structural and fiscally responsible need throughout the county. As you are about to consider approval of this capital investment of a replacement school for Delaney High School, we would ask that you approve it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kathleen Causey. Kathleen Causey. Kathleen, you're unmuted. Good evening. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Thank you. My name is Kathleen Causey, and I am a citizen of Baltimore County as well as a member of the Board of Education of Baltimore County since 2015. This evening, I'm speaking as an individual. Um, I wanted to attend the planning meeting citizen input, and I appreciate the work of the planning board to evaluate so many complicated issues around the county as uh, we have to allocate uh, our funding in the most effective and efficient way. I do want to appreciate that the Board of Education of Baltimore County since 2017 has approved state and county capital improvement plans and requests for funding that have included Delaney High School and Towson High School as replacement schools. And that in the most recent board meeting on September 14th in 2021, the board voted unanimously to forward to the state a capital improvement plan and funding request that included replacement funding for Towson and Delaney High School. And I appreciate the uh, work by so many um, over so many years that have really improved the schools in every area of the county. We have much work to do, uh, but it is important to um, do the right thing at the right time. So I just wanted to thank you again for the planning board and I appreciate hearing from um, all of the citizens speaking here tonight. Thank, thank you. you for your comments. Dennis Lorenz. Dennis. Okay, sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you. And if you could either put up my PDF or share the screen with me so I could show the PDF or my PowerPoint. First, I, I just want to say thank you, Nancy, and to the uh, various members of the planning board. This is a great forum. And I am here as uh, one of um, 10 other homeowners in the, in the Benita Avenue area. And we have stormwater issues and it's, it's been going on for probably 20, 25 years. And we always assume it's going to get better maybe. And, but, um, it seems like it's getting worse, uh, probably due to maybe more uh, rains and more severe rains. Um, if you could go to the next page. Um, we basically have, I, I believe, a lot of development that is, um, has increased a lot of the stormwater runoff that we have here. I've been a homeowner here since the 80s, and um, my home was originally built in the 50s, and uh, I think it was uh, others were finished in the 80s as well. And um, there's been development around us um, since um, Benita Avenue was widened, and there were uh, large developments that went in, in particular, as you see under the, the uh, observations, uh, the Worthington Park um, uh, development, which is very large near us. And what I, I'm requesting is, is that there's, there's some simple things that could be done because we're getting a lot of flooding. And there's a lot of dead fallen debris in the stream that a lot of this stormwater runs into. 
and um, th this could be cleaned out. And I'm, I'm not sure that's not very much money and I'm not sure who would do it. Maybe the Department of the Environment. The other one is uh, to evaluate the existing stormwater containment system in Worthington Park. And then finally, we really appreciate anything that you can do to help us. And I'll go through the rest of this um, if you could uh, page forward. There's an aerial view here. This is the area that we're talking about on Bonita Avenue. We are uh, the downstream side here as we near Owings Mills Boulevard. And that's primarily the impacted zone. Next page. There's uh, basically the flow of stormwater is coming in from the Worthington Park area. And um, I'll tell you, there's, I don't see your typical um, stormwater pond, but it looks like they may have some sort of a, uh, using the existing um, forestry area there uh, as a drain field. But I'll tell you, it's just completely saturated with water and it's probably absorbing much less than may have been originally uh, designed. I was in there this morning just checking again. I was in there a month ago and a month before that, and it's just very saturated in many areas. Uh, there was also a roadway widening project in the, in the 90s that increased the culvert size that crosses over from the Worthington Park area over to the other side of Bonita, Bonita Avenue that feeds into that stream. And uh, the diameter is much larger than the downstream diameters of our culverts and our driveways, restricting the flow. And it's approximately 17% if you just uh, simply look at the 36 and the 42 inch culvert designs. Next page, please. Um, so, what I think. Minutes. Hello? Two minutes. The two minutes was up. Oh. Thank you, Dennis. If you want to submit that to the planning department board, it would be happy to look at it. Becky, okay, sure. Thank you. Oh, hello. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm looking more passionate about those schools than this is my most important thing. I want you to follow the my pass recommendations of the county paid for the independent consultant. And I can tell you that not every school board member voted um, 100% to pass the recommendations. Um, I can name five people that didn't that are on the board, including the um, chairman of the board. Um, I don't want to see Towson High or Delaney um, built new. Um, they could be renovated and expanded for the My Pass plan. Under this plan, 86 other schools in the county will get equitable funding. And um, all students will be able to attend by 2026 a school that's at 100% uh, capacity, not over that. Um, inequality of education causes uh, lower education levels. People notice it. Uh, future earnings decline. There's a lower base of former county taxes. There's a higher crime rate. Um, poor public health outcomes because of a lower education and increased taxes for the middle classes to pay for increased health care because poor people go to the emergency rooms, which increases costs for those who have insurance. And um, I'd also like to request more police and woodlawn and more property inspectors. And I live in the Catonsville area and we vote too. And Johnny O, you may say what he what he what you think he thinks, but until I hear from Johnny O, I think he's going to be equitable. And that's where I want to see equitable funding for all schools, not just politically connected. Thank you. Thank you all for coming to speak tonight. I think that's the conclusion of all the people that have signed up to speak by three o'clock this afternoon. Um, Ms. Bensley, is there any written comments that were provided via chat? Yes, we have a whole lot of them, Chairman Hafford. Um, did did you want to go back through the list of anyone that missed their opportunity to speak, or would you like to do the written comments? Um, did any of the people come in late? Yes, quite a few. Okay. Um, first, uh, first we have uh, Philip Warlick. He's unmuted if he's there. Mr. Warlick. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Warlock, are you there? Okay, maybe he wasn't there. Next name, please. Um, we have Sharan Bunting. Ms. Bunting? She's unmuted. Hi, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, I just had a comment. I wasn't at, I wasn't going to speak for the two minutes. I wasn't I kind of came in late, so I wasn't sure if this was already addressed, but there was someone making a proposal about Bel Air Road and Glade Avenue. And I'm one of the homeowners on Glade Avenue, the first house, which this proposal would affect. And I just wanted to say that I did not agree with it. OK, thank you. Thank you. Next person. Um, next, we have Kaval Faker. Um, hello, yes, I'm here. Thank you. Um, I, I do not have uh, comments prepared as eloquently as some of the other folks have expressed, but I echo everything that uh, Ms. Hedelman has said, or uh, many other residents have said I'm in support of uh, replacing Delaney High. And uh, I just wanted to say that in the years that we have been here, I've seen my um, neighbors move out simply because the school system is not up to par. We have lost them to Howard County. Uh, we have had neighbors who now prefer to send their kids to private schools and people who can afford to do that, good for them. But folks like us need these schools fixed. We have kids who are going to be going to these schools and it is appalling to hear the conditions of the schools. Um, thank you for the opportunity, and I hope um, the folks who make decisions have heard um, the residents loud and clear. Thank you so much. Any other comments? That's everyone that joined that had previously signed up, Chairman Hoffman. Thank you so much. Ms. Mensley, can now, can now you share the written comments that were inputted into the chat? Yes, first we have Lauren Stanton. She said Milford Mill Academy is a magnet school in Windsor Mill slash Milford Mill and should be included primarily in budget planning to update schools. Um, Dawn Stout stated, I am Dawn Stout, resident of Catonsville across from Rolling Road Golf Course. I have several concerns and suggestions for the area. Sidewalk, uh, one, sidewalks on all, sidewalks all the way around Catonsville High School. Two, keep Rolling Road Golf Course rare open leisure space in the area. Three, approve whale and properties promenade and work with Spring Grove to allow multi-use shopping, dining, living parks, and efficient use of ground and gateway from UMBC uh, to Catonsville Village. Next we had, sorry, now I'm going through the chat. <laughs> um, Next, we had Peter Fitzpatrick, who stated, I would ask the board to adopt the MyPass as recommended by the study commissioned by the Baltimore County government and Baltimore County Public Schools and conducted by Canon Design. The MyPass provides a comprehensive and equitable plan to improve school facilities across the county. It was conducted in a manner that freed planning from the normal process of communities with resources having greater voice than those without resources. It is the best plan available to provide improvement uh, to the most schools over the course of the next decade and a half. Robin Harvey stated, good evening. I am requesting that $60,000 be allocated in the capital budget for the development of green open space in Woodlawn slash Windsor Mill communities. There is a documented disparity in green open space on the west side of the county. This negatively impacts the quality of life of residents. This will also aid in preserving the Gwynn Falls watershed uh, and the bay. Mm. Next, we had um, David Pittenger, who stated the Natural History Museum is a great place for the community. <laughs> Sorry, I'm scrolling. <laughs> Next, we had um, from uh, Senator Chris West. He said, this is State Senator Chris West. The message I wanted to communicate is that strong schools equal strong communities. Towson High School is over 70 years old and is so massively overcrowded that there are a dozen modular class classroom units out back to accommodate the students who can't fit in the school. This is an embarrassment to the greater Towson community and a serious drag on the community. Who would want to move to a community with a high school that is over 70 years old, increasingly decrepit and massively overcrowded? Delaney High School is nearly as old. The building has been visibly deteriorating for many years. 
I've had conversations with constituents who graduated from Delaney two decades ago and who characterized the school as a, as a dump when they were there. If we want central Baltimore County to thrive, we can't send a message to parents that their kids aren't going to be attending school in embarrassingly overcrowded and just decrepit buildings. Um, and then he continued on. In conclusion, if the planning board should oppose the building replacement schools for Towson and Delaney, the next time that they would come up for consideration uh, they, for replacement, they would both be pushing 100 years old, telling Towson and Timonian parents that their children and grandchildren, as well as as well, will be going to a school that is up to 100 years old in buildings is not acceptable. It will severely undercut the attractiveness of central Baltimore County as a place to live, work, and raise a family. Once again, strong schools equal strong communities. Um, we received a message from Sandy Wills, who stated, I am Sandy Wills, president of the Hamilton Community Association. I would like to advocate for sidewalks and curbs on Hamilton Avenue between 32nd Street and Chesico Avenue in Rosedale, Maryland. I've lived in the community for 33 years and have witnessed the challenges of commuting back and forth from bus stops, supermarkets, and the community. Just within the past two months, there have been five car accidents in this section. We have tried unsuccessfully over the past 20 years and have either been told that there is no funding or the projects couldn't be done. As Delegate Carl Jackson stated, our residents will be commuting to the new community center coming soon. We do not want to see residents and students getting injured because of this hazardous street. Please consider this in the CIP this year. Vincent Talbert stated, my name is Vincent Talbert. I am a volunteer with the Timonium Rec Council. I organize a daily pickleball drop at Seminary Park on the tennis courts. I'm here to advocate for the dedicated indoor and outdoor pickleball courts in the county. Pickleball, pickleball is one of the fastest growing sports in the county, in the country, because it is accessible to all. Unlike tennis, someone old or young, no matter the athletic powers, can learn the game and start playing effectively within an hour lesson. The sport is particularly popular with our older citizens as it is less physically demanding to play successfully. As our population ages, the demand for pickleball will continue to grow. Currently, we have over 300 people registered to play pickleball through LTRC. We are playing seven days a week from the morning till the evening with 20 to 25 people at any given time. The typical player plays three plus times a week for one to two hours per session. Currently, we use the tennis courts with chalk lines. This creates conflict with the tennis players and limits the availability for both the tennis and pickleball players. Pickleball courts are smaller than tennis courts, so 16 people can be playing in the same space as four people can play tennis. The greatest value of pickleball is that the opportunity to create community for Baltimore County citizens across lines of differences while providing an outlet for physical activity that will improve the health of our citizens. Similarly, similar sized jurisdictions have made pickleball courts a priority, for example, Montgomery County, Fairfax County. Thank you for the consideration on this request. Um, Marlene Pearsall wrote, as you know, the Baltimore County Board of Education voted in favor of the amended capital budget that re rejected the recommendations presented by Canon Design. The supplemental information of the financial recommendations reveals that 17 premium capital projects, most of which, including two of the most expensive, expensive projects, are, are located in the central area. I am the chair of the Southwest area, and I'm not here to diminish the board's vote. However, I can't let my stakeholders' voices not be heard. We have a clear and direct consequence of the board's actions uh, as it means current and anticipated resources, renovations, and enhancements desperately needed by these schools will be deferred for well beyond a 15-year period. This simply means that many children during this period will be denied access to safe, adequate, and equ equitable elementary, middle, and high school education in Baltimore County. I am specifically talking on behalf of Featherbed Elementary, who is in need of sidewalks, renovated car loops, and additions to replace Feather to or replacement of Featherbed Lane Elementary. I'm also putting on notice a renovation for the historic Arbutus Elementary and building a new school to be named Arbutus Middle to relieve the crowded Catonsville and Lansdowne schools. Lastly, we urge uh, you to support Canon Design's recommendations of Woodbridge Elementary, who is currently operating as an open space school, which desperately needs walls. Fortunately, the MyPass process called for equitable allocation of limited resources. According to that result um, of a BC, according to the result of BCPS MyPass survey, 91% of respondents agreed that funding for facilities should be allocated to benefit as many students as possible. The survey also stated that 4,800 plus community survey responses 
confirm broad support for recommended facility options that enable more equitable distribution of capital improvement and 82% of respondents preferred 15 years or less for the longest students should go without a budget, without a building renovation. An overwhelming number of respondents want children to have equitable access and opportunity, and this includes access to academic opportunities, programs, safety, um, and learning environments that support at-risk students. In closing, I expect your decision to take into account the preference of the majority of parents and stakeholders who support Canon Design's rec recommendations and equitable distribution of funds. Um, Kai Young stated, I would love to see my proposals funded through a new luxury tax, tax on cannabis, and any other way that would be an equitably, equability, uh -huh, equability tax of the ultra wealthy in the county whose combined income could likely pay for every project proposed in this meeting. Um, oh. And then we received some additional comments in the chat while I was speaking. Um, Miko Baldwin stated, my name is Miko Baldwin, Miss Miko Baldwin, HOA president for Parkview Trails in Windsor Mill, co-chair of Milford Mill alumni, previous parent liaison for Woodlawn High School and Baltimore County resident for 45 years. Let me first say that Milford Mill High, Milford Mill High is one of the oldest schools in the county built in 1949. The school so-called renovation was done poorly. Currently, not all classrooms have air conditioning units. So if we are going to ask for a rebuild and speak about age, then rebuild, re revisit the schools that you renovated and make it fair to all schools. It is not fair that the east side of the county, um, but all school parents, communities, and most of the students. Second, would the county please take a look at the deterioration of Johnny Cake Road near Patasco State Park leading to Howard County. We have beautiful homes being built and more government jobs in our government jobs we have beautiful homes being built and more government jobs in our government jobs in the Woodlawn area. Many use Johnny Cake Road and the road is in serious need of disrepair. Also, please check the lighting on Security Boulevard past the bowling alley headed towards Ingleside Avenue. Consider building a recreation center at Crosby and Rolling Road. The last school system is failing. The last school system is failing to a C and we need to all work to bring Baltimore County back to an A. Vincent Talbert stated, I am a volunteer. Um, that one was already read. My apologies. Um, and then I think we had a couple in the Q and A, and then that will be it. Um, no, I think that's everything. Thank you, Miss Bensley. I appreciate that. Thank you to all of you that signed up to speak tonight, and thank you for putting in your comments in the chat that we read. We appreciate your time. Are there any further questions from our board now? No questions? Well, I really wanna thank all the department heads that showed up tonight. I know you've had a long day in the planning department. I appreciate all your time and effort that went into this meeting this evening. So the citizen, the citizen input net meeting is now adjourned. Have a, have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you.